Hi handsome and welcome to my 12th video. This one might be a bit more controversial than the videos I made so far. It is also going to be part 1 of what is most likely going to be a 3 part series, so stay tuned for the other parts. Now, you have probably read the title, so I won't keep you waiting any longer. Let's talk about life skills and effort. Life skills are an essential part of BDO, yet if there was a word to describe life skills in the last, I would say, a year or so, it would be stagnant. Since Land of the Morning Light, there have been basically no new additions to life skills in general, and what changes have been made, while possibly beneficial for new players, have had either little to no effect on profitability of life skilling, or are straight up negatively impacting how much money you are making. The addition of Guru 100 is a promising new frontier, however, as there are no bonuses for reaching it, and therefore no real incentive outside of bragging rights to pursue it, it is only speculative of how good or bad change Guru 100 is going to be. Now, I have named this part effort, and we are going to be talking about effort, because before we can even talk about life skill profitability and life skill money per hour and how much I think it should be or how much you might think it should be, there is one type of sentiment in the BDO community, especially in the non life skilling part of it, that sounds something like this. Of course, life skills are less money per hour. They should be less uh, money per hour because they require less effort. So this is why we are talking about effort in BDO, how we can quantify it, what defines it, and what it really means for the game. I would say that for the majority of people playing BDO, effort simply translates into do I click more buttons or not, also known as having a higher APM. This might sound okay on the face of it, because you can say that grinding is a bit more sweaty than gathering or hunting, and you will definitely see the idea that, oh, you are just AFK cooking all the time, etc. And we will get to this. However, if APM was everything that would decide effort and therefore money per hour, then Kunoichi and Ninja would be the highest earning classes in the game and your awakening witch or scholar or <laughs> god forbid succession nova would be at the absolute bottom so it's not apm apm clearly does not define how much money you are making at least not in the big picture. So what is effort? In my opinion, it's not just a single metric, but a combination of multiple ones. So let's go through them all. Okay, before we begin, I have prepared a couple of graphs. Now, before we start talking about those graphs in particular, I need to set a couple of disclaimers. First of all, I did not talk about PvP at all. I am not knowledgeable about PvP enough to be able to put it into these graphs or even talk about it in general. There are content creators and other people who are more knowledgeable about PvP than me. And if you want to hear their opinion on like PvP profitability, etc., you can go and ask them or watch them if they have made a video like this already. Next up, I included more than just grinding. So there are some other combat activities or combat based activities so it's not just grinding and even sometimes I have decided to split grinding into end game and like season so because sometimes there are way too big differences. Also think of the graph of like 10 to 1 scale, so we will be only moving at about like half a point difference at most. At the end I will put all the graphs next to each other and you will see like how they all combine into one. Next, uh, I have also not included some like sub life skills so notably i did not split fishing into active and afk fishing and i did not split gathering into the different types of gathering right like uh, water scooping hoe gathering butchering etc i think that would just bog the graph down even more than it needs to be even then i decided to put them all together because most of the time they are one and the same that's about it so let's get into the graphs themselves okay first metric that we are going to talk about is how active is the activity that we are doing. Now you might think that this is just a fancier name for APM, but it's not. Active in this case just means if and how much do you have to sit at your computer to do this activity. If you flip that around, how AFK can you be 
while still making money from this activity. If we look at the graph, we have the two sides of the spectrum. So on one side, we have the completely passive income, like workers and login rewards, where you only need to be online. Where on the other hand, we have grinding, other combat activities such as bosses, etc. And we also have gathering and hunting. Now you will see that I did not put gathering and hunting on the same level as grinding. I think grinding really is the most active you can be in BDO, but gathering is not that far off, especially if you really want to sweat gathering, you can really be pretty active. So I don't think the difference there is that big at all. And also we need to consider that you are still sitting at the computer at all times. And although gathering and hunting might be a bit more relaxing, you might be like watching a podcast or a streamer or Netflix or whatever, you are still at the computer, you are still active. Most of the other life skills with the exception of fishing and horse training which are also pretty afk you can do them overnight most of the other ones are i would say like semi afk where like cooking and alchemy you can do depending on how much weight your character has but usually if you are like no weight no extra weight at all you can do cooking for maybe 10 minutes maybe 15 maybe 20 25 if your mastery is low and if you are making like light recipes so recipes that don't require a lot of weight but cooking and processing still have mass processing so it will be somewhat fast and alchemy is a little bit slower because it does not have mass processing or mass cooking the second most important metric when it comes to calculating effort is how much setup is required for these activities because obviously that's still time and money invested to be able to do that activity and that time and money is obviously effort right so it might not be right now but there is definitely the effort that you have invested pre Previously, and you should be rewarded for that effort. So this is why high-end spots like Dekia Cyclops, Dekia Ash Forest, etc. will make more money because you put more effort into obtaining that gear to be able to grind in those spots as opposed to like season spots like Blood Wolves or Kratuga or Centaurs etc. which you can do basically straight up after leveling a little bit. If these high-end spots did not make more money, like much more money nobody would ever go and do them because it would not be worth even getting that gear in the first place but setup does not have to mean just gear on its own it can also mean other things and i'm not talking about uh, crystals and artifacts and so on i think this is still considered gear we are talking about other kinds of setup so do you need a party do you need other people for this activity like uh, guild bosses for example are there other resources or items that you need for this activity such as buffs do you need loot scrolls do you need aggress fever for some of the aggress spots or even for gathering do you need mates for two spots in specific because for some reason Dekia Histria and Dekia Akman still don't allow you to take your horse inside those guy spots despite Perlebis announcing that you would be able to do this like two weeks after those spots came out to life and they never delivered I don't know why so now you need like 20 mates to be able to grind there normally without getting overweight and not just hating your life while you are in these spaces rent over in terms of life skills energy and mastery levels are also very important not just gear energy obviously it dictates how long you can gather for and even hunt for and mastery has mastery levels have a lot of actual mastery behind them so every level is five masters which is like if you consider how many levels there actually are it's a quite an insane number of mastery to be gained from just getting more levels and they work like your typical skyrim oblivion type of leveling where you just need to do that activity more and obviously all of this will take a lot of time to get so even getting high enough mastery and energy is a long process and getting the gear for 2000 mastery is no easy task either even gathering requires a decent investment of time and money and in my 
my opinion, this is the easiest life skill to get mastery for. A life skills like cooking, alchemy, and especially hunting, which I think is probably the hardest to set up and to get 2000 mastery in, because it's an active life skill that you need to actively do. You can't just to go AFK like cooking and alchemy, and you don't have the tool slot, so it takes a long time to get, or a lot of money. It should also be mentioned that the life skill progression is pretty scuffed. You start with your magic tools, which will cap you at 650 gathering or mastery, and you progress all the way to, I would say, Trimanos accessories kind of easily, as well as Ted Manos clothes and Ted Manos tools and your vital crystals. All of this is relatively cheap. I think altogether it will cost you like 50 billion silver. Then your next upgrades become Ted Manos accessory, which are worth 25 to 30 billion each. Each, and pen manos clothes which are like 50 to 60 billion and after this you reach 2000 mastery and you have plateaued and there is no reason to ever upgrade again i don't know why that is but that's just how it goes if we are talking about simply silver for the gear you need then sure 700 gear score is going to be more expensive than 2000 mastery but i think this is mostly because there is no real reason to push past 2000 mastery so items like pen manos accessories which are extremely expensive are also completely worthless because you don't get anything from them if you look at the graph i think all of these are fairly self-explanatory keep in mind that setup does not mean just silver cost but also time cost so this is why hunting is so high up and this is also why sailing is pretty high up because to get your ship takes a lot of time and you need to do a lot of weeklies and daily quests also trade crates are pretty high up because you need a lot of contribution points same as farming you need a lot of contribution points and with trade crates you need a lot of good workers and you also need a lot of good setup with your other worker like empire so you get enough materials where it is at least a little bit automatic where you don't have to go and gather like timber or whatever fishing and training require basically no setup whatsoever you can just get a rod you can get a capturing rope and you can go and do your horse training or fishing i would say tuval grinding also requires very little effort or setup rather to do because you just start the game you go through the story up to like media and then you just hop into tuvala and you are grinding tuvala and it's all good within like 10 hours you are pen tuvala and you are just chilling. Okay, next metric is how dangerous and or difficult are these activities. Now, I will talk about danger mostly, but we will also mention difficulty because they go kind of hand in hand. Now, the main point against uh, life skills is exactly that they are not very dangerous. There is not that much risk for the amount of reward that you would be getting. Life skills are pretty safe. Most of the time you are doing them in a safe zone. The only life skill I would say where you can realistically die to mobs, not to just PvP griefing or whatever, is hunting. Now, your chances of dying at the lower end grind spots like Blood Wolves and Kratuga or even like some of the mid-game spots like Orcs or like Sikraya Lover or something are pretty low as well, but they are not zero. Now, difficulty is kind of subjective. You can see that the graph only says danger, but you will see. Endgame grinding is by far part the most dangerous you are at a very high risk of losing crystals and you need those crystals to be able to grind there so the risk versus reward is there right if you accidentally die at like Dekia ash forest and you lose your green steer you are going to want to unalive yourself <laughs> right it's going to suck you're not going to be very happy about that but you are still there because the amount of money you get there is worth the risk of losing the getting steer now we have also like bosses and dungeons this is mostly if you have lower end gear because those bosses like world bosses kill bosses can still one shot you and then we, we go way 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 lower down the scale we have like Tuvala grinding, like I said, and hunting. And then every other life skill, because most life skills you are doing in a safe zone and you cannot die in a safe zone, right? Let's talk about difficulty. This is kind of subjective. For some people, learning their class on a specific 
grind spot, learning the rotation, the button presses, like combos, enemy mechanics, etc. will be rather difficult and it, it will take a lot of time for them to learn. For others, going through spreadsheets and looking at what is most profitable, how to get certain material, what to do with the materials you gather, like do you sell them, do you make something out of them what would that something be even like which life skill do you want to do or should you do all of this will also be pretty hard and you will have a lot of decision making to go through the key difference is that once you learn a spot on a class once you learn your class in general it will be pretty hard to forget and very rarely if ever does anything about your class or even more rarely does anything about the grind spot change Change. On the other hand, life skills are almost constantly shifting. Good activities can become bad, bad recipes can become good, you could be making a billion silver per hour one week only for some kind of event to come and make you lose half of your money the next week or vice versa there can be an event that will drive the demand of certain materials way up and now you are making way more money than you were before it always is going to change a little bit and you always need to watch out for what is currently demanded and what you should focus on if i could use an analogy for the difficulty of life skills compared to grind I would say that grinders are kind of like warehouse workers and life skillers are kind of like the warehouse middle management. Both have difficult jobs, but they are very different in how difficult or what kind of difficult they are, if that makes sense. All right, we have one last major metric and then we have two minor metrics that we will get to later. The last major metric for determining money per hour or even just profitability is if the activity is limited in some sort of way. Now, limits are fairly self-explanatory. Mostly we are talking about time gates. So this would be your basically all bosses like Land of the Morning Light, etc. We also need to mention like Marni Room and Agris Fever because they are also kind of limited by time, but they are also a, a resource and resources can also be some kind of limit. Again, we have energy, we have knowledge. Those will limit your money per hour of your life skill big time. Now, uh, if you decide to never touch the grass, you can theoretically grind for as long as you can. With life skills, things are different. Usually, even with energy potions on cooldown, it takes me less than an hour to run through all my energy and I have like 550 something energy and energy recharges at a snail space. Assuming that I go do some other life skill or some other activity that does not require require energy on the same character because if you don't use the same character if you are not active your energy goes super slow right if you are offline on a character that character only recovers one energy every hour no matter if you have any buffs like kama sylvia a subscription or whatever even if i am active on that character if i'm afk fishing or cooking or processing or whatever i can only recover up to five energy every three minutes so 100 energy every hour which means that if i want to use all my energy again i need to wait for five and a half hours gathering and even hunting to a lesser extent clearly are not designed to be done perpetually so they should award more money per hour simply because you won't be able to gather for as long as you will be able to grind. So if I only have, let's say, two hours every day to play the game and I grind for two hours, even if I grind some lower end spot that will only give me like, let's say 600 million silver per hour, in two hours, that is 1.2 bill. If I do gathering, I can do only a one hour, give or take. It will earn me like 800 to maybe a billion silver in that hour. But then the other hour, I'm effectively making zero. So in those two hours, if we combine those two hours, I made like 400 to 500 million per hour right so i'm already making less and this is just two hours if we took it to five hours it would be way worse this is why i also think that limits play a big uh, difference in profitability if we look at the graph 
We can also see this in the actual time gates, like the big time gates, like bosses and dungeons, which reset every week, and they award an insane amount of silver. Also, bartering is quite limited because you can only do a limited amount of barters every day. Sure, you can make, I think, like one and a half, two billion silver in the time that you barter, but after that you can't do any more. I actually decided to put hunting a little bit lower because there are some hunting spots such as Shadow Lions or even Grass Rhinos if you don't have Kama Sylvia subscription that will take you quite a long time to get rid of all of your energy and especially sniper hunting I think is basically impossible to run out of energy unless you are super sweating and on the ass end of the scale we have fishing fishing is the only life skill that you can realistically do for as long as you want there are no limits on fishing okay we have two minor metrics to talk about but they are still important enough to mention now the first one is how reliable is the money per hour reliability comes in two forms the first one is what you already know very well if you have ever played bdo and this is rng the a very extreme case of rng is seen in bosses and dungeons which give you a loot box now we have all definitely been in a situation like this you go with your friend or your guildies to garmov you have played the game for five years you have not seen anything other than three or four crowns from garmov and your new friend who just picked up the game played it for two weeks and this is his second garmov ever gets a garmov heart and needless to say you don't really want to play with him anymore and if you are on talking terms, it's going to be just saying hi to each other <laughs> from now on. If we talk about just grind spots, we have two types of spots. The first one is your RNG type spot, technical term, and this is like star sand or your deboreka spots. Basically, spots with a baseline of trash that is quite small amount of the total money per hour that you are going to be making. This is compensated for getting lucky enough. So you can have an hour where you drop like three Deboreka necklaces at Ash Forest and you will be making an insane amount of money for that hour but then it can be followed by like five hours of not dropping a single necklace at all and you will hate your life and this is why these rng type spots can afford to have a higher average money per hour because they are still based on rng and you would need to grind an insane amount of hours for the law of big numbers to take place the other end of the grind spot spectrums are your trash heavy spots also technical term patented and these would be your lvs spots and even like normal olens etc these are the exact opposite they might still have some items that are kind of rare but either these items are not that expensive so i think of like sisal's necklace and even some tungrat accessories are not that expensive anymore so if you get them cool it's nice but it's not the reason you are there the quintessential trash heavy spot would be your elvia orcs right so there are no big ticket items there is no dopamine you just grind 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 and you know roughly what you are going to be getting now for life skills rng can be most felt in gathering if you get a lot of mini games and if if you get a lot of good procs at mini games like 20 black gym fragments and 20 uh, sharp shards you are going to be making a little bit more money than you would usually be and even hunting is kind of like this if you are doing like shadow lions and you drop six heads per hour you are going to be pretty happy about that also alchemy is kind of reliant on those uh, viper ducks that are completely random and especially now that you can drop an alchemy stone that's worth like 800 million silver that's pretty lucky if you ask me for the other life skills except for like fishing and training we also need to talk about the other part of reliability and it's a little bit harder to explain it has to do with how easy it is to get silver value associated with the item now this also applies to ground 
running spots. The best example of reliability in this type is Elvia cups and even infinite potions. Garmov.com gives these items a price, yet you cannot sell these items until you have the completed version. So although Garmov will tell you that your cookie for Elvia cup costs like 25 million, it's only taking the total cost of the cup and dividing it by 200 and some extra for, for the uh, other ingredients. So sure, you can say it's worth 25 million, but until you have those 200 cookies or whatever you want to call them, you are not seeing that money. And same for infinite potion pieces. You can get super lucky with your pity pieces or even full drops, but until you have the entire potion, it's zero silver. It's worth absolutely nothing. That's not all. We also need to talk about the market saturation. This is a really big problem with uh, Paralabis' philosophy of buffing, quote-unquote buffing, life skills by simply making them drop more items and merging certain types of items together. Instead of, for example, increasing price caps or giving life skillers a more reliable source of income, such as more imperial deliveries per day or even better trash loot, like increasing the price of fairy powder. I will talk a little bit more about this in the future parts. So I'm just mentioning it here a little bit. As it stands, almost every life skill is tied to the central market. So you are kind of dependent on if the item that you are making or gathering is demanded on the market and like we talked a little bit with the events and stuff, supply and demand plays a crucial role and if your market for the item that you are getting is saturated, you might not see the amount of money that video lytics might tell you. And you might not see the money at all because by the time you get, uh, you grind the items, the price will crash and you will have to wait. Now, if we take grinding for example, you can compare selling distortion earrings or Deboreca belts and compare them to like Munchaun scrolls, right? This is obviously very exaggerated, but it is made to prove my point. We should also talk a little bit about pay to win in life skills. I did not really mention this that much, but life skills are way more pay to win than grinding is because there are a lot of items that will give you huge benefits in life skilling that you just cannot get for silver. Think of your canapé outfit, think of your hedgehogs, think of your value pack, especially value pack because central market tax is a real thing and if you life skill you are selling items on the central market and good luck doing that without a value pack and even then we have like storage inventory space inventory weight is a big one if you are cooking and doing alchemy and even like Kama Sylvia subscription etc all of this is pay to win and I would say it's much worse pay to win than it is with grinding Finally, is there another reason besides money for doing this activity? This one should be easy to understand. Mostly this has to do with choosing between money and EXP. So compare Shadow Lions and Grass Rhinos. Compare Butchering and Herbalism. Compare Gaifin Under and Elvia Trolls. Obviously different spots will have different reasons for going to those spots. It's important to have differences in spots so that everything is not the same. However, EXP is not the only other reason besides money to do an activity. There might be a treasure item of some sort behind this grind spot or activity. So this would be like your infinite potion pieces or your treasure map and telescope etc. You might also want a title or a cosmetic. A lot of different fish have different titles and if you want a specific title you might have to catch those different types of fish. Cosmetics, we don't have that many but if you want the La Orzeca armor you need to do Odilita grind spots and Ash Forest as well. Do you want to do this simply for bragging rights? So the new Guru level 100 is an excellent thing for bragging rights. There is literally no other reason to do them right now. You might also have some sort of a personal goal for doing these activities. Obviously this is hard to quantify, so this will probably not be taken into account when balancing the game, but you don't always play the game for money. You don't always play the game for efficiency and if you have seen any of my videos, you know that I am not the kind of guy who wants to be super efficient or who even tells you to be super efficient. And similarly to this is the activity simply fun to do. This is kind of not just 
personal, you will often see activities that are more boring or feel more like a chore with more of an incentive to do them. If you want one example, think of adventure logs and you will know exactly what I mean. Okay, those are all the metrics. Let's quickly recap what the metrics are. So, how active is the given activity? How much setup do you need? How dangerous and or difficult it is to do, if it is limited in any way, how reliably will you actually make the money and if you actually do the activity for money. These are all, in my opinion, important metrics that will take some sort of larger or smaller part of determining effort and we are talking about effort in terms of money per hour. Alright handsome, that is going to be it for today's video. Here are all of the graphs that we have talked about. Now, I have not combined them into a single graph like I promised I would and that is because we will talk about that in the next video where we will directly compare life skills with grinding and we will talk about how much money should each life skill realistically be for how well it fits into these metrics compared to how much money it actually is making. If that interests you in any way, do stay tuned. And if not, I am still happy that you have made it this far. I will try to put that video out as soon as I can. Originally, this was supposed to be a single video, but as you can probably tell by the length of this part alone, it would take a lot of time to get through all of that. And I feel like that it's better for me to put out three smaller videos rather than just keep you waiting for a month before I release one big one. I hope you understand and with that being said, I hope I see you in the second part. Thank you for staying with me, thank you for all the subscribers that I have gotten, all the com comments, all the likes, everything that you have ever done for me uh, do join my discord it's <laughs> i'm still alone there so let's be friends i hope you liked the parrot reveal in the previous video go watch that i know that the story mode videos are not doing that well maybe it's just because they are not that well produced or something like that so do tell me a little bit more about them and i think that's all i wanted to say make sure to like and subscribe and enjoy your grind